Hey there, today we're going to be having a look at the Tinco iFlora 3, and it's basically a cordless vacuum cleaner and washing machine thing, or I guess you could say it's a carpet cleaner for hard floors. And it's got basically all of the components of a carpet cleaner in it. It's got a brush roll, dirty and clean water tanks, and it's quite a powerful vacuum too, supposedly. It's an all-in-one device that's quite compact, and we'll be having a closer look at it today. I'm going to be focusing mostly on noise in internal construction, and I'm sure if you're interested in everyday use, there are other better review videos on YouTube that you might want to check out. Let's start by taking a look at the noise emitted by the machine when it's running as a dry vacuum. So that means I'm going to leave out the cleaner for now, and we'll just see how loud and what it sounds like when it's running as a dry vacuum. I've set up an iPhone as a spectrum analyzer as well as a Tascam DR05 at basically listening level, so uh, where your ears would probably be while you're using the machine typically, and that'll tell us roughly how loud the machine is in decibels and what kind of sound it's making. The sound profiles in wet and dry mode are about the same, judging from the last test, but the turbo mode will introduce a sound at about 8 kHz or so that uh, some people might be sensitive to. It's not significantly louder though, even though it sounds like it would be. It's only a few decibels of difference, I think. Um, here we're testing the ability of the vacuum to leave the floor dry after sucking up all the water. I have sprayed some water on the floor and now we're cleaning it in wet mode to see how much water is left behind. Um, here we're finished and you can see there is some water left over but not too much and this should dry pretty quickly. Let's try out a paper towel and see uh, how much is left. And finally, let's try out the self-cleaning function. I'll just let it run and we'll see what it looks like uh, and how long it takes, I guess. So we start by pressing that button and that starts the process. The machine seems to start this process by just running the roller and saturating it with fluid until it decides to vacuum out all the liquid and it looks like it's started now. Um, you can see the water coming up through the extractor tube and it's flying up and going up into the chamber and into the dirty water tank.
Looks like we're just coming up on the end of the cycle here. It should stop any moment. There you go. It stopped. And it's telling us that we have a full dirty water tank. Well, it probably just tells you to empty it. There's not actually too much in there. Uh, it has been running for a few minutes, so it's collected quite a lot of water. You can see it's kind of a little bit dirty. I did test it out on the floor, just a small area you're looking at right now before making this video. There's a filter and there's some lint on it. Um, the filter isn't getting quite wet or anything, even though it does say to completely dry. So I'm guessing they're referring to um, water from washing it or something. I'm not sure. There are just a couple things I want to point out before we get into the teardown. Behind the clean water and dirty water tanks, there's a bunch of screws. You can see there's three there and there's some hidden ones that don't uh, go on camera very well. They need to be removed in order to take the whole thing apart. Now what you won't need to do is take the bottom apart, and I did that first and that turned out to be a frustrating experience. So if you need to take apart anything inside the main machine, there's all the screws in the back, there's going to be two in the middle and two in the top under that back cover, and then this whole battery cover just pops right off. It might take a little force though. And then after that you can take this top ring off, snap it right off, there's screws underneath, and this top panel just comes right off. And then you can take all the other screws out and the motor's right in the middle there. So that's sort of where things are. And with that said, let's get on with the teardown. Here we can see the inlet and the outlet of the vacuum motor, and that's where the air comes in and is exhausted. Following the path of the exhaust air, we can see that it actually passes under this dirty water bin, which if we put back on, you can see it goes right under and out this crack in the bottom before it's exhausted. Up here is where the detergent enters the machine. Here's a closer look at the dirty water tank with the dirty water deflector and the baffle and the float switch, which cuts off the vacuum motor intake to prevent water from overflowing into the motor. There's a HEPA filter at the top, and that can be easily removed for cleaning. It's got a pre-filter on the bottom and it's hinged for easy maintenance. Here's the brush roller. It's made of some microfiber material. And it's quite hard to turn. There's probably a gearbox in it. It pops right out with this uh, handy little door. And I believe it just comes, yeah, slides right out. Over on the other side, there's a bearing and there is a, a big washer that's attached to the uh, mount to prevent tangling of hair and whatnot into the actual bearing. And there's a drive spline on the other end. Pretty typical. There's a little springy clip to keep it in. It's a big roller. I think you can get them for 20 bucks if they go bad or if you need to replace it. Here's where the, here's where the detergent comes out through these array of nozzles and there is a edge that the roller rubs against and a vacuum port and of course a squeegee to get the water out of the floor. It's uh, made of some clear rubber. Let's look at the back cover. Uh, we can see that it runs on 21.6 volts and it's rated at 220 watts. Make note of that number. We'll uh, compare that to the motor. Take off that cover. I've taken screws off already to save a bit of time. And there's the battery, what I assume. Now we head around to the bottom and unclip this little piece of trim. Just two clips and there's some screws underneath that will need to be removed. Let's pry up these clips and take out all the screws in the bottom to free the brush roller motor. And we can see it's actually got these vibration mounts on it, only on the back. And it's permanently installed with these weird wire nuts, which are rubberized. Here inside we can have a closer look at these rubberized wire nuts. And there's quite a lot of uh, vibration mounting going on. Uh, there's a little white gasket, you can probably see that, to keep the hair out of the assembly right there. And that's a nice touch proper brush motor with proper carbon brushes, not just little bronze uh, pieces. There's motors for the wires for the motor. There's a little magnetic pump, a solenoid pump, and it's got little thermal overload as well as those uh, 
crimp connectors we saw earlier. And that's for the liquid. And there's a little micro switch to tell if the unit is upright or in charging position. Now we remove the decorative ring and the display. Underneath that, we can remove the battery cover, which requires some force because it's sealed with a little bit of glue and a gasket. Now we can have a closer look at the electronics and the battery pack, which is a pack of six cells of 21700 lithium ion batteries at 21.6 volts and totaling about 64.8 watt hours. That's about the size of a laptop battery. Splitting apart the main casing, we can see the drainage system for the clean water tank connector area, as well as this flow sensor, or rather the, a liquid sensor, that tells the system if there is still clean water or detergent, um, and that's in line with the supply. Here's a closer look at the sensor. I think it works by capacitive change. Um, when the liquid is in there, I think the capacitance changes on the ground plane below the PCB. I'm not sure, but it's totally encapsulated and sealed, so we can't really take it apart to find out how it works. Here's a polypropylene casing for the motor, probably to reduce noise. Inside there, there's a rubber sleeve with a duct to supply cooling air to the ventilation port for the motor on the side of the vacuum pump or fan. You can see the label on the motor. Interestingly enough, the motor is only rated at 150 watts as opposed to 220 on the label on the back of the unit. Now, one of the ways to explain that is probably the brush roller motor, which has to work against quite a lot of resistance. And also, this does have a turbo mode, so maybe it's uh, exceeding the limits temporarily. We can see the sealed electronic compartment of the motor and this view down the cooling port at the laminations of the stator. Taking a closer look at the front of the fan, it looks like the impeller is a standard backwards curved impeller as opposed to a 3D turbocharger style one like we see in Dyson. This motor does look quite similar to the Dyson digital motor with the exception of that impeller, but it does work quite well despite being simple. Unlike the Dyson digital motor, this one looks like it's three phases instead of just two, and it's powered by a microcontroller, an 8051 for your FU6818Q. Um, it's not a 32-bit arm like we usually see controlling motors. The motherboard is pretty simple. It's got a step-down converter and it's actually an LM2596, the really common step-down converter. It's got a bunch of housekeeping for the battery, for a bunch of MOSFETs for switching motors on and off. There's not actually too much going on here, it looks like. Uh, it's a pretty simple design. Moving on to the back, we can see the STM32 microcontroller that runs the whole operation. And we see what looks like four to five big sensing resistors. That will probably be how the chip detects if the brush roller is jammed. If the motor stalls, the current will rise and the chip can alert the user that something's wrong. That just about brings us to the end of this video. I hope some of the information here was useful to you, and if you have any other questions or if there's something in particular you'd like me to test on this machine, feel free to let me know in the comments. Until then, thanks for watching, and goodbye.